Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And this is our third dry dock update, which means it's already been uh, two full weeks since our dry dock announcement. First off, I really want to thank all of you who have donated to support the dry docking effort. We've already made tremendous progress towards uh, raising that other $5 million that we need to get the ship dry dock. I, we haven't even launched a capital campaign for this yet, and you guys have donated tens of thousands of dollars already towards the effort. I, I cannot thank you enough. There is a link in the description below uh, if you'd like to donate specifically to this project. There's also a link in the description below. Our other capital project that we're wrapping up right now is redecking the ship. Uh, so if you'd like to buy some teak from our store, uh, that link is down there too. And you're essentially making a donation to the ship via that and we send you a piece of teak uh, in exchange. So much appreciated. In today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the major projects uh, that we hope to accomplish during our dry docking. And again, we still don't have an exact date for this. It depends on the yard availability and our fundraising. Um, we are in the shaft alley. We are in the portmost shaft alley where number four propeller shaft comes out of the back of the ship. This gland seal is the not entirely watertight uh, fitting that the propeller shaft passes through. As a ship in mothballs or a ship being used as a museum ship, it can be cranked down and made more or less watertight. And it has uh, succeeded at that so far. But one of the common points of failures on museum ships is leaking through here. In service, the propeller shaft is spinning. And uh, so obviously there's gonna be some water that comes in here and that's partially to help cool. You've got these metals grinding against each other where the propeller shaft is spinning in its gland seal. So the, the water there is partially a lubricant and a coolant uh, to prevent that from damaging these uh, separate metals. And you can see you've got this built up section here and then this other section up here that it's in contact with. In between those two slots is a fibrous uh, packing material, which is what we have right here. Uh, this is a bundle of it that was left on here. I assume in 1991 when the ship was last dry docked, uh, they, they finished repacking these. Oftentimes, based on other ships I've worked on, it's uh, five or maybe six wraps around the shaft. You basically unbolt this, take it off, put the packing on, and then crank down on with that, and it compresses it to the point that it makes it watertight. Um, that is designed to be good for about 20 years, and we've been very fortunate we've gotten 30 years out of this so far, but it's not one of those things we want to tempt fate on. Uh, you can see from when the ship was in service, there is all sorts of corrosion on the deck around here, because it wasn't completely watertight then. Like I said, the water was supposed to come in, and so the, the coatings here are not in the best shape, and the steel under the coatings that has been exposed is not in the best shape. So that's all stuff that we want to uh, address while we're in the yard. The big problem is, when we're at sea, this thing is spinning. It's equally distributing its weight. As a museum ship, for the last 30 some odd years, the entire weight of the propeller shaft, which uh, I've gotten this question a couple times now, even though we've answered it in the past. All four of our propellers are still on the ship. So that is causing the propeller shaft uh, to have weight on it, which is pushing down. Which means over time, those wrappings of packing are going to get crushed down and the top part is going to open up. The museum is still debating whether or not after we've repacked these, if we're going to remove those propellers and potentially even the entire last link of shaft. Oh, check this out, right over here. We could unbolt this coupling and pull this entire last section of shaft out, blank this over, and it's another uh, blanked over through hull opening. So that is certainly an option that is available to us. The propeller is a different metal from the rest of the ship. The ship is primarily steel. The propeller is a manganese bronze, um, which means that through cathodic action, the steel will sacrifice itself for the bronze. 
uh, our anodes on the hull and our impressed current cathodic protection system in the seafloor here where we're berthed are supposed to stop that. However, there's, there's always the chance that something happens. It is common for museum ships to remove their propellers, though not required. Uh, and many ships still have their propellers on them. For example, all four Iowa-class battleships were mothballed with their propellers on them, and all four still have them on there. Missouri was dry docked in 2009 and retained her propellers. On the other side of things, uh, recently, like within the last year or two, Midway was having issues where the tide was picking the ship up and down and uh, she was slamming on the seafloor with her rudders and propellers. And so that is transmitting that shock through this very small opening into the ship and into the frame of the ship. And that's going to do damage to the ship over time. So they used divers in situ to remove her propellers and uh, rudders, uh, which is a very cool project. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that at the Hintzler conference this year when I get to sit down with my counterparts there and hear about the work they're doing. There's a link in the description below. If you would like to come to the Historic Naval Ships Association Conference, you can either register virtually uh, or come in person. It's being hosted by the Destroyer Escort Slater this year. So uh, we, we are still very much debating whether we want to remove those propellers. Um, the propellers are part of the ship. The ship is our artifact. Leaving them on there leaves the ship intact, although it may lead to additional corrosion. Taking them off creates four more artifacts that the museum needs to care for. So then we need, uh, one, the money to add that to this project. Uh, two, the money to then transport them from the dry dock back to wherever we're going to display them. Uh, and then three, the money to build big mounts to display them on. At our museum, uh, very close to us, we already have an Iowa-class propeller on display. Do we need four more? We could always distribute them to other places, but now we're paying to send them there and we're losing control of them. Once we set them up in some park in upstate New Jersey or whatever, uh, we are no longer seeing what corrosion is happening. We don't know uh, what good a shape they're in. And you know, we do this now, we all know that it's been done. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, uh, the folks in that park will have no idea what those propellers are from, uh, why they're important, uh, and when the next eminent domain happens and a highway is being built through there, it just gets melted for scrap and we've lost one of these artifacts. Uh, we're, we're trying to play a very long-term game here and it is still very much debated in our museum ship community whether it is better to keep them in situ or remove them. As of now, staff at the museum are still debating back and forth whether it'll happen. Some of us are in some camp, some of us are in another. Uh, realistically, when we get the ship out of the water for the first time in what will be 33 years by the time we do this, uh, we will get a look at the back of the ship and then be like, oh my God, there's so much more corrosion here than we see elsewhere. We have got to get these out of here, whatever it costs. Or, hmm, you know what? This is fine. It was designed to be here. Um, we should leave them in place. With the funding we have at this point, we've got no choice but to leave them in place. Uh, so another question that I'm bringing up in this dry dock uh, process that I don't have an answer for you right now. It is certainly something that uh, as you continue to watch these weekly Wednesday updates over the next six months or year until this project is done, uh, I, I will answer it at some point. Uh, but right now I do not have an answer for you. I know that that is going to fail in a very short amount of time. You can see the corrosion on it. And I have known for the six years that I've worked here that one day I'm gonna come down here and there's going to be water in this space. It happened to me at my last museum ship. And uh, I'm just glad that the state of New Jersey, the museum's board of trustees, our staff have worked to get us in the yard before that happens. Because as soon as we spring a leak, whether it's in the shaft alley or, or the shell plating or whatever else, the, the cost of dry docking is just going to double. 
So I'm glad that uh, where other museum ships have had issues, we're learning from that and uh, we are going to be able to do this as a preventative maintenance project and not an emergency repair project. So while we're still in the decision-making process about what we do uh, as this step of the project, let us know in the comment section down below what you think is more important, that we remove these propellers and distribute them, that we remove these propellers and we keep them all on site, that we leave the propellers in place like they're supposed to be. Uh, let, let us know your reasonings and your thoughts in the comment section down below, and uh, we'll read them and take them into account as we're making our decision later on. We are still intending to do weekly updates on the project every week between now and when we go into the yard, at which point it will probably become daily updates. Um, what are some other topics you'd like to hear more about that, that maybe we've talked about or you've seen from other ships uh, and, and you're interested in for us? Let us know in the comments section down below. Fair warning, many things like what we're going to do here, we, we don't have answers for you yet until we've gotten the money and signed the contract. Um, we will not have answers. That said, your donations are going a tremendous way towards getting us to the point where we have enough money that we can sign that contract. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support this massive project. Uh, or pick up some teak in our ship store and that also supports the museum. We really appreciate it. Balsham, New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State significantly more this year than most. Uh, so we appreciate that. Also from a number of other businesses and private individuals, again, significantly more than in the past, and we really, really appreciate it. This is a, a once in a generation project. Uh, you can also support us by liking, sharing, subscribing so more people find about the museum, our channel, and this major upcoming project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Wednesday with more updates.